Hey everyone, this is Mike and earlier tonight the job action trailer for Endwalker ended up dropping so today we're going to be taking a look at it, breaking down all of the skills that we can see and also talk about some of the job changes that they talked about in the live letter itself because not everything is going to be shown that is changing and of course these are not all of the changes happening to the jobs either. So I'm just going to be talking about what we can see, what we know from the live letter as well and then we'll just go through it as we watch the video. So we're going to be starting off with Dragoon. First of all, Blood of the Dragon is now going to be a trait meaning that you do not need to keep Blood of the Dragon up anymore. Also, on the Blood of the Dragon gauge, as you can see on the right side of the gauge, there are now two stacks which will grant us access to a new ability. The AoE combo is also going to be four parts now, as you can see, with a four part over there, which will grant you one of those stacks on your Blood of the Dragon gauge. For your single target combo, Chaos Trust and Full Trust seem to have new animations, but I assume that these will work exactly the same. When executing your Raiden Trust, you also get another stack on that gauge. Spine Shatter Dive also has two charges now, uh, so you can use that as a gap closer and not just purely for damage. You can just save a charge when needed. Of course, here we have Life of the Dragon, so all the same stuff. And then we're going to be finishing it off with that new skill that uses up those two new charges of the Blood of the Dragon gauge. Moving over to Warrior, first of all Onslaught and Upheaval no longer cost Beast Gauge, so they're just going to be cooldowns that you're going to be pressing now. And Onslaught also has three charges attached to it. On top of that, your AoE combo will now also apply Storm's Eye, so it's going to be great for dungeons. And then we also have the upgraded Upheaval skill over here, or at least that's what I'm expecting that to be. Uh, in the release as well, uh, this is probably also just the upgraded Nascent Flash skill animation as well. Uh, when it comes down to in release, this is now 60 seconds, coming down from 90, and it also means that in release is not as long as it used to be. So it seems to be for three GCDs, uh, maybe it's four, because of course we have some uh, waiting going on over here, but let's say it's just three GCDs. And then after you're done with your in release, you also get access to this new skill right here, which is a pretty cool looking move if I do say so myself. Moving over to Red Mage, also quite a few changes coming over to this one. So first of all, we have some new additions to our AoE skill, and also as you can see, uh, on the job gauge itself there are three like kind of prisms, I guess you could say, and you can fill them up, and once they're filled up, it seems like you get access to your combo finishers. So your combo finishers can also be used when using your AoE skills. Now, this little thing, I'm going to just quickly rewind for this. When he does his backflip, uh, you can see him put up a big bubble. This is going to be a defensive buff that Red Mage has access to. Uh, and then you can see over here, which is the AoE combo finisher. This manification now just grants you 50 gauge, it seems, on both, which is enough to do your melee finisher, because your melee combos are going to be costing less mana, black and white mana, that is. Uh, and then we also have AoE versions for all of your finishers. So both Scorch, Holy, uh, as well as Flare are now all going to be AoE skills. And then as you can see over here, this is a third combo finisher that we get access to as well. So you'll do first Holy or Flare, then Scorch, and then this new action over here. Moving over to Scholar, this one is, well, I think a lot of people probably know about this already, but quite disappointing because Scholar doesn't really seem to be getting a whole lot of new stuff. So Fairy did the AoE heal, then we have Recitation Adlo that is going to be spread as well. And then we have another Fairy action. This one used to cost 10 Fairy Gauge, seems like it does not cost Gauge anymore. Then we have Chain Stratagem, Biolysis. It does look like we have a new Broil action, so an upgraded Broil. Uh, this also looks like it's something new, but I'm not quite sure what it is. And this is your Peloton, basically. And then we also have our upgraded uh, AoE move. Now, the Peloton itself is basically going to work like Peloton, I feel like, but you'll just be able to use it in combat. Uh, outside of that, all of the healers now work like Astrologian, where their spammable uh, single target attack is a 1.5 second cast time. So you'll be able to do one weave after each single target attack, and that's going to work like that for all of the healers. Dark Knight, another job that didn't really get changed all that much, but there are a few slight changes to it. So first of all, now this is Blood Weapon, now we have Salted Earth. Now Salted Earth is going to be placed where you are standing, it's no longer a ground targeted ability like it is right now. And it's also a combo action now, so as you can see over here, this is what I'm assuming the combo action for Salted Earth to be. Then we have the Blackest Knight, which it looked like you can put a second Blackest Knight on a party member as well, could be a new skill of course. And then we have our Living Shadow. The Living Shadow itself also has a new move. The little skill he did over there as well looks like it is something new. 
uh, but I'm not entirely sure because it looks a lot like your Edge of Shadow, um, but it does look like an upgraded version of Edge of Shadow. Uh, and then, of course, they just do some attacks simultaneously over here. And that will do it for Dark Knight. So nothing too big of a change over here. Dancer, this one also got a few changes. Uh, also looking towards procs, uh, very important over there as well. I will talk about that when we get there. So first of all, we have technical step over here. This is also going to get a combo action attached to it. So after technical, as you can see over here, it's going to be another move added. This one seems like it is going to have a new skill as well. <clears throat> that was Flourish. Um, but Flourish now basically shares your procs with single target as well as AoE. I'm going to rewind real quick because that's a new skill. But basically, your AoE Flourish procs and your single target Flourish procs are going to be shared. So if you use them on single target skills, you won't have them for AoE anymore. And if you use them on AoE skills, you won't have them for single target anymore. So we'll make it a little bit uh, less busy, I guess you could say. And you don't necessarily need to be in melee range all the time anymore. Uh, this is going to be, yeah, that's your flourish over there. So again, just the two single target moves. As you can see, we're getting fans on our gauge. And then we have this new skill. No clue what this does. Then we have our devilment, which also has a combo action, if I am not mistaken. Yep, which we can see over here. And then we have the same thing for our uh, little dance that we do during downtime that also has a combo action. Now, on top of that, we also have a guaranteed SP generation. Not quite sure if it showed over... Well, I guess it is, because the ninja is not really doing anything, but we're still generating SP, so there is some kind of guaranteed SP generation attached to Dancer right now, which should be great, because overall it's always pretty random uh, how much SP you will be generating. Then Machinist, we have our normal Bio Blaster, which is our AoE Drill, Flamethrower, old skills that we're used to. Then we have Reassemble, this one now is going to have two charges, so you'll be able to use that on a lot more stuff in the future. We have a new Shotgun skill, this seems to do AoE damage. We have our normal 1-2-3 combo, this one remains the same. Uh, we have an Air Anchor over here and a new skill coming up in just a second as well. Uh, which is also going to be giving us 20 battery gauge, it looks like. And this is all the same stuff that we've already seen. Automaton Queen. And we have our Wildfire and our Hypercharge. This is still the same as well. Uh, the Automaton Queen also has a new skill, but I'm not quite sure if you actually need to press that uh, or if that is something that the Queen will do automatically when she disappears. And then Drill still exists as well. So it's mainly the Shotgun as well as the other uh, Chainsaw skill that is new. Gunbreaker. First off, we now have three cartridges, and it looks like Bloodfest will also give all three cartridges for you as well. Uh, also, all of the gap closers for the tanks have all been extended by five Yalms, I believe. Uh, so that's something that you can do as well. And we have our Nashing Fang combo. This one is consolidated into one button now, so you don't need three different buttons for the three combo skills of Nashing Fang. And we're finishing off our combo over here. Blasting Zone. This looks like an upgraded version of Heart of Stone. And we have our AoE Spender and our normal AoE combo. Then we have our Bow Shock. Now Burst Strike also has a continuation action now, as you can see over here. And this seems to be a new Cartridge Spender as well that costs two cartridges. Moving over to Bard. Songs have now been extended to 45 seconds. Uh, that's also something I forgot to mention. Uh, all of the jobs are now going to be more streamlined towards 60 and 120 second cooldowns. So because of that, the bars rotation has been adjusted to now having 45 second songs instead to kind of line up with that. So we go into the Wanderer's Minuet, we're applying our two dots, these are all skills that we've seen before. Uh, each song now also has a special action that you can do that buffs the rest of your party as well. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if that is going to be uh, like an extra button that you will have to press for each song or if it's just going to change depending on what song you're in. And this is what that effect will look like in just a second, or at least I believe it is. Uh, this is one of our new skills. Uh, the arrows, of course. And then this is the buffing effect that you get from your songs, I would imagine. Now we have Apex Arrow, which now also has a combo action that looks like this. Then Astrologian, this one's getting quite the rework, which we already knew was gonna happen. Uh, so first of all, when we're looking at the healing aspect of Astrologian, it's basically going to be working how Diurnal Astro works right now. So if you're used to playing Diurnal Astrologian, 
uh, then the new one is going to feel fairly familiar to you. But the job gauge has been changed quite a bit. As you can see, we now have two card slots. Divination is also going to be a personal damage buff or just a personal buff. They didn't really talk about it all too much. Uh, and then, of course, the cards are still going to be buffing your teammates uh, as well as giving you stuff on your job gauge. Minor Arcana is making a return as well. Uh, this is normal draw and redraw. Uh, which, by the way, the charges on redraw are gone, so you just get to redraw once per card that you draw. Uh, and then the Minor Arcana seems to be its own skill, which makes you draw a Lord or a Lady. Uh, if this is going back to how it used to work back in Stormblood, uh, then it will most likely be that the Lord of Crowns deals AoE damage and the Lady of Crowns does AoE healing. But of course, we don't know that for sure. That's just speculation on my part also seems that this new skill over here consumes all of your seals and then does some very big damage. I am assuming maybe it's like a special uh, debuff that you apply. And then we have this cool looking skill over here. Uh, this one looks to be some kind of a shield that you can apply, which will then be able to be triggered after you receive damage. So kind of like horoscope, um, but instead of needing a heal for it to proc, you might need to take damage for it to proc. Then, Samurai, a couple of different changes over here. Make your Shisui. This one is going to have two charges. Also right there seems to be like an AoE Yukikaze. And then, of course, we have Heikambana over here, our dot, which you get with a single Sen if you use AI Jutsu. Then we have our other two AoE skills. Uh, this will now also be able to apply our skill speed buff and our damage buff, by the way. Uh, so that's very important. They also mentioned that for Dragoon, it's probably going to work like that as well. Uh, that you can apply this and bowel. So here we have our second Mako Shisui. Uh, so we're just going to be applying our three cents over here. And then we also have a second stack of Tsubame Gaishi that we will be able to be using. So we're going to get a dual Midare over here. And we have Shoha, which we already had the level 80 skill. Hikishoten to get our gauge back. And then we also have a new Ei Jutsu, which seems to be doing a lot of damage. And this will also grant you a Meditate stack. So also a cool new skill, probably level 90 skill or something. Then White Mage. Uh, nothing too crazy over here. Uh, we just have our Dia, Divine Benison. Divine Benison now has two stacks. Uh, this is Thin Air. And of course we have Glare, which now has the shorter cost time, just like Astrologian does. Second stack of Divine Benison, we have our Blood Lily. We also have a new persistent healing effect, which is that thing that you can see over there. Not quite sure if this is just an upgraded Asylum, or if you can use it alongside Asylum. A skill used right there, I have no idea what that is. And then we also have an upgraded Holy over here. Ninja. Also quite a few changes. First of all, the Shadow Fang is gone, so the damage over time ability is gone. And then the ability that's used over here is something that you can use to apply the Hutan buff to yourself. Uh, so that will be really good when you go into downtime, uh, that you don't need to basically waste a ninjutsu usage on just reapplying Hutan. All fairly similar stuff that we have over here. Just a single target combo, Mug to get some gauge, Bunshin to summon our clone, Aeolian Edge. And then we're going to see some new stuff over here. So we're going to be armor crushing using our Shikuchi to get back. This is a new skill as well. Also seems to give us Ninky Gage. And then Riton now seems to have some extra actions as well. Both Riton, Huton and Doton seems to be having extra actions. Moving on to Black Mage. This one seems really cool with some of the changes that we've gotten. First of all, Enochian is now a trait. So as long as you have Umbral Ice or Astral Fire active, Enochian is going to be active as well. And whenever you're switching in between fire and ice, you're going to be getting a new stack on your job gauge. So as you can see, we have this extra stack on the left side of our gauge, which allows us to use a fire slash ice move that seems to refresh our umbral ice or astral fire duration to the max as well. Uh, basically cutting out the need to use that fire one that we have to do right now. Going back into ice, this is a new ice skill. No clue what this one is going to be. Uh, we have our Thunder 4, I believe this is. This is the AoE one. That's Freeze. And then we're going to go back into our Fire. Uh, this is again that new special skill. When we go back into Fire, new we have again a new Fire skill. No clue what this one does. Uh, looks maybe like it's some kind of an AoE skill, who knows. And then of course we have Triple Cast over here. And then we're going to do a Triple Flare. We can do that because we have one Umbral Heart. And then of course Mana Font over here. 
And it also looks like Foul, uh, which is the AoE skill, is now also instant cast, which would be really cool. And then, of course, Xenoglossy. Uh, Sage, for this one, I'm going to be pausing quite a bit uh, to explain some things. So first off, this is a single target heal. Now, when you see this move happening right here, you're basically going to be enhancing some of your abilities. So the single target heal that we just did is now going to turn into an instant cast single target shield. Then this is probably just single target heal, kind of like a lust trait. And this thing right here that we just did is going to be assigning a party member that is going to receive heals whenever we deal damage. So kind of like how the fairy works for Scholar, although this one you can designate, so you'll just throw that on the main tank, or if you're doing four party content or like four man content, just on the tank. So when we do our single target damage, as you can see, the tank is going to get healed. Now over here, we used our buffing action again. So our single target DPS skill is now going to become a damage over time skill. Then, we have our AoE heal, again, we're empowering ourselves, so it's now an instant cast AoE shield. Uh, this one looks like just an AoE heal, kind of like Indom from Scholar. Uh, this is probably going to be some kind of an AoE action, some kind of a shield. A long cast time single target damage ability, maybe? Uh, that's our gap closer, and this looks like a 1-2 AoE combo, uh, for which it looks like you need to be in melee range. Moving over to Monk, again, some really cool changes to Monk over here as well. So first off, we have our Brotherhood. Uh, as you can see on the job gauge, there are three new buttons underneath there. This has to do with the change to Perfect Balance and the Blitz attacks that we'll see in just a second as well. This is also a new stance, I believe. And then we have our Gap Closer. Now, the Gap Closer for Monk has been changed, so Shoulder Tackle is gone. Uh, this can be used at any target, so a boss or a party member, but it will no longer deal damage. Also stacks up to three times, so you're going to be fairly mobile on Monk. Kind of think of it as Ethereal Manipulation that Black Mage has right now. So, when we go into Perfect Balance, uh, this is our new AoE combo starter, I believe. Uh, we are going to be doing three GCDs under perfect balance, which will give us those three blitz stacks underneath our gauge. And once we have three stacks, we can use blitz. And then this will give us either yin or yang, which is going to be the black or the white one. Uh, and as you can see, we already started uh, with the black one. And then when we do a third one, so a third blitz, we are going to be doing like a combo finisher blitz, I guess you could say. So some really cool changes over here for Monk with the new Blitz mechanic. Summoner, complete rework over here. Uh, as you can see, there's going to be a lot of new stuff happening. So we just have our Ruin over here. This is the new Energy Drain animation. A pet action, which gives us access to Ruin 4. Uh, this is one of our Aetherflow skills. Then we have Bahamut. When we summon Bahamut, it's going to work like Phoenix does right now. So our GCDs are going to be changing into Bahamut GCDs. Uh, which is basically something that I had been asking for, so I'm really happy to see that. Uh, trances are also gone, so no more Dreadworm Trance, Fireworm Trance, it's going to be purely summons. Now, once you've summoned one of your demi-summons, both Bahamut or Phoenix, you're going to be getting those three shards. As you can see, we're about to summon Garuda over here. Uh, we can summon these primals in whatever order that we want, and when we summon them, they'll first do an attack before they move away again, and then we also get access to their specific skills. So for Garuda, it's going to be one casted ability, and then we get four instant cast abilities after that, so it's going to make us very mobile. Then moving over into Titan. And we also have a specific time on when we can use these skills as well. Uh, this is our new AoE skill, so that's what it looks like. Oh yeah, Summoner also does not have dots anymore, so dots have been completely removed. For Titan, we're going to have an instant cast ability that also procs an off-global cooldown. Uh, which you can use four times in a row. So it's just going to be GCD of global cooldown, GCD of global cooldown. Uh, kind of like how Gunbreaker works with their continuation, I guess. And then last but not least, we have Ifrit. This one is going to be the one that makes you very immobile, so both Titan and Garuda are very mobile summons. Ifrit is the opposite. You're going to get access to two stacks, uh, of which you can use a very powerful GCD, uh, which does require a long cast time, which is this right here. And then we also have a gap closer and a second follow-up smash for that as well. And then we have the Phoenix Summon. This one seems to work fairly similar to the Phoenix that we are used to, uh, with like Brand of Purgatory and Fountain of Fire, I believe it is called. Although this skill right here seems to be something new, 
uh, what that is, we do not know yet. And then of course, after you're done with Phoenix, as you can see on your job cage again, we have those three emeralds to summon our three primals. Going into Reaper, this one was very confusing and also the explanation that they did during the life letter was kind of confusing as well. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to add too much insight to this one, unfortunately enough. Um, there's a lot of pre-buffing stuff that you can do with Reaper, as you can see. Very long animation as well. Uh, they have a teleport or like a portal gap closer, which you can also go back to the portal afterwards if you want. Reaper also has a raid buff, uh, which you'll see happening just a bit. Uh, seems to kind of function like Brotherhood, because as you can see, it applies to the whole party here. And then when the Bard uses their skill, it seems like the Reaper is getting some kind of a gauge from the Bard as well. So it'll probably benefit them, kind of like Brotherhood does for Monk. Then we have two gauges. We have the Shroud gauge, which will allow you to uh, transform into or like let yourself be possessed uh, by your avatar, I guess. And then we also have the Red Gauge, uh, which is going to be used to summon your avatar to do follow-up attacks for you. I believe during the avatar form, the one that we see right now, uh, we also get a very fast attack speed buff. So all of your GCDs are going to be like 1.5 second recast timer. And then we have our finishing move over here, which ends the avatar form. And then last but not least, we have Paladin. This one didn't receive too many changes, although there are some very cool ones. So again, we have our gap closer over here. We're going to do our Goring Blade combo. And this seems to be an upgrade of Spirits Within. Let's hope they reduced the uh, the HP cost to it. And what we saw there was upgraded Sheltron. And of course, Wings. You have Requiescat over here. Clemency. Holy Spirit. The AoE Holy Spirit. And then we have something new. So we have Confiteor. And after we do that, we get access to a new 1-2-3 Confiteor combo. Uh, which you can see right here. So a lot of confetti going on with this new paladin. And that basically rounds off the job action trailer. So those are all the job actions that we got to see. Of course, some extra information was given during the live letter as well, which I tried to sprinkle in wherever I could. And then, of course, if I ended up missing anything, feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. It's been a very long night, uh, but I hope that I caught as much as possible. And of course, if you have any more questions about something that I said uh, that might have been confusing, feel free to leave a comment as well, and I'll definitely get back to you. But that's going to do it for me. Very excited for the new expansion. The job action trailer was very hype, at least. Looking forward to getting my hands on all of these new jobs, try out the new skills and stuff. And of course, work with the new systems as well, like with Monk, for example, the Blitz system. Seems like it's going to be very cool. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. So I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank my Patreons for their support. And I'll see you in the next one.